Hello everybody, this is Kerry Lowry along with Jeff Platt and we're going to bring you the second half of Coppell versus Longview. Many technical difficulties preventing the first half from coming about and in fact the sound might not be so great for the second half as we are now at halftime. Our score is Longview 10 and Coppell 9 in quite a crazy first half with some turnovers, blocked kicks, a safety, all kinds of things. We'll go through them right now on our drive charts here and let you know what happened as we catch you up. We'll also have uh, Jeff got down onto the field and talk to Coach Joe McBride before the game and we'll play that for you in just a moment. Started off the game with Longview receiving the opening kickoff. Adam Sinners of Coppell, the kicker, kicked it into the end zone for a touchback. They took over at their own 25-yard line, as per is the rule. 25-yard line, not the 20. And their opening possession was a long one. 13 plays, 50 yards, mixing the run and the pass. And they finally got down into plus territory for of Coppell. And from the 25-yard line, they attempted a field goal. Andres Perez put it up, and it was no good. And their score remained 0-0. Coppell took over for the first time in the game, and they went three and out. The run by uh, C.J. West and then Chris Atkins uh, on the sack, and then are lost by on the sack and then CJ West with another one yard run they end up punting the ball away minus four yards in three plays and Longview takes over they run the ball five straight times on the next possession picking up a couple first downs and they get down to the 35 yard line of Coppell before they get pushed backwards on a on a second down play, a uh, loss on the play. They end up with a fourth down and 14 from the Coppell 43-yard line, and they punted it away and went into the end zone for a touchback. Seven plays, 20 yards. This game remained scoreless here in the first quarter. Coppell takes over. Gavin McDaniel picks up 19 yards on the opening play, gets out to his own 39-yard line, but then a penalty pushes him back a little bit. But a pass... Um, they have a pass that goes incomplete. End up with a fourth down and 12, and Adam Centers has to come in for the punt. So the Coppell offense really not getting it going very early at all. Longview takes over. They go four plays and get minus two yards, and one of those a safety. Loss of 10 as the snap goes over the punter's head into the end, through the back of the end zone on fourth down from the two, and or actually from the 10-yard line, and that is the first point. Those are the first points of the game. Coppell on the board. Naturally, their offense not moving, so their defense comes through, or special teams, if you'll say, with the safety 2-0, to zero, just like last night with USC and Hawaii <laughs> that I think started off 2-0 to zero or 5-2 to two or something crazy like that. Coppell then gets the ball. Of course, after the safety, Longview has to kick back to Coppell, and they get it at decent field position at their own 38-yard line after a return by Troy Parker. They give it to C.J. West a couple times again, and then a pass for 12 yards converts a first down on a third down and three. Skyler Bono completes his first pass, and that gets them into Longview territory at the 43-yard line after a run by Gavin McDaniel. A couple more uh, incomplete passes, and they stall out at the Longview 39-yard line. Adam Centers comes in, the star of the show. He punts it again. This one, not very good. It's returned 40 all the way out to the 37-yard line, so I think they make two yards on the change around between where they punted it and where Longview takes over at their own 37-yard line. Longview takes over right there, immediately a five-yard penalty on the offense, and or actually that was on the return so they're at their own 37 yard line they managed to get out a little bit uh, of their own end including a 28 yard uh, pass to from from Chumley the quarterback for Longview to his main receiver Dorian Leonard 28 yards there that put them down to the 10 yard line of Coppell First and goal from the 10 after a one-yard run, then a pass from Chumley to Jordan Whitaker for a touchdown. The first touchdown of the game, a nine-yard pass, 
and Longview on the board. It's seven to two. They led. Coppell gets the ball very quickly. Uh, a kick is or I'm not sure why the kick is all the way only to the 31 yard line of um, of Longview. But then on the very first play from scrimmage, C.J. West runs 31 yards for a touchdown right up the gut. Extra point is good, and Coppell leads nine to seven. Troy Parker returned it. Troy Parker, according to Doug Steele, our stats guy, he said Troy Parker returned it all the way to the 31-yard line of Longview. I remember that now because he was running wild at the sideline. He did get knocked down and then thrown out of bounds uh, harshly. No flag there, but they make him pay in the next play and get it into the end zone. Longview takes over, down by two now in the second quarter, and they put together a decent drive. It goes six plays, 31 yards, but they end up having to punt, and Troy Parker returns it out all the way, uh, again, all the way back to the 27-yard line of Longview. So a short field again because the special teams are coming through for Coppell. Skyler Bono throws it to our 12 yards to Boris Maloum on the near sideline. Maloum, the backup fullback um, and tailback, he catches a little swing pass out of the backfield. Then, hand off to Boris Maloum. He gets six. Gavin McDaniel gets successive runs of one yard each, and that brings up a fourth down and two. Uh, they do line up without the, not the field goal team. They line up some confusion on the snap. They throw it into the end zone thinking they had a free play and a shot into the end zone. They did not. The referee, nobody threw a flag, so it ends up being an incomplete pass into the end zone. The entire Coppell team, coaching staff, everyone, including us up here, thought that it would be, an in, or it would be a flag, and therefore they would get another chance and maybe even an automatic first down. But instead, nothing. They, it's an incomplete pass, and Longview takes over. Longview didn't have much time to go, though. We're about two minutes to go in the half, and they put on... Quite a drive there. Nine plays, 73 yards in the hurry-up, including passes from Desmond Chumley, the quarterback, to Jordan Whitaker for 19 yards, to Dorian Leonard for 19 yards, and then a run by Jermichael Hasty for 12 yards. They get all the way down to the 20-yard line. Andres Perez comes in for the field goal. It's up. It is good, and that makes the score. Longview 10, Coppell 9. No time really for Coppell to do anything after the kickoff by Perez. They run the ball into the line for C.J. West. He gets four yards, and therefore that closes out the scoring in the first half. So now it's like you were there, right? Yeah. Okay. So long, exactly. <laughs> Longview 10 and Coppell 9. Now I'll bring in uh, Jeff Platt. He's with me today for the Coppell Cowboys season opener, the Tom Landry Classic. Kerry, I'll tell you what, it's great to be here. I'm glad that we're on the air now. We're fighting through the problems, and, and we're, we're going to get going for the second half coming up in just a little bit. Oh, what a back and forth first half, I would say. The first quarter, a little sloppy, really, from both teams, trying to get the feel of, of course, the first game of the high school football season. Coppell only had one first down, 18 total yards in, uh, in that first quarter, and Longview had five first downs and 70 total yards. So it is a game that... And both teams were, were kind of grinding out, and then in the second quarter, I think we saw a drastic change of pace. It might have started with a, a gift to Coppell on a bad snap by Longview, and that gave Coppell the first two points of the game, gave him the early 2 nothing lead. And, and from there, it just seemed like the action really picked up, the pace really picked up. That's, what, that's almost what Coppell was a little worried about, because a, a quick pace probably does not necessarily favor them. They want to kind of battle it out and grind it out in the trenches. Longview is this, this quick team of a lot of athletes. That's what Coach McBride was worried about coming into it. But overall, it sets up pretty well, I would say, for an exciting second half. Lots of hard hitting we saw. Balls are popping out everywhere because of the hard hits, even some late hits. So a little chippy down there after that very sluggish first quarter like you talked about. And, you know, that happens a lot in zero week. You know, teams come out here and you can have the greatest offense in the world, and we've seen it year in, year out. It's still August. These guys have been practicing for less than a month, and clearly we had our issues because we've been practicing <laughs> less than a month. So 
um, the teams have the same issues, Jeff, and yeah. and you see it on the field, and, and, it, and it might be the second half explosion uh, that now everybody, the jitters are out. And also, Kerry, yeah, you got to figure there's so much pressure, and not just because this opens up the season, but this is the Tom Landry Classic here at maybe the, the greatest high school football stadium across the United States of America. So it's very possible that the players just felt a load on their shoulders, felt those jitters that you were mentioning, and now they're getting a the feel for the game and they're becoming more and more comfortable. We definitely saw that progress throughout the second quarter, and I'm sure we'll see it in the third as well. The Longview Band out on the field right now performing for the crowd. Again, 10 to 9, our score. I want to let you know we're not going to have a whole lot of commercials come through to you, so we're going to let you know who our sponsors are for Coppell Cowboy Football and Champion Sports Radio this season. Uh, Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Check out the best mouth-watering, lip-smacking, finger-licking, great-tasting barbecue there is at Dickie's Barbecue Pit, located on Denton Tap Road just north of Beltline. Dickie's Barbecue Pit, slow-smoked and served fast since 1941. Also a big sponsor, Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance can help your young athletes reach their goals. Visit their Coppell location at 801 Hammond Street near Bethel Road and Freeport Parkway, or visit them online at Velocity sp.com become a better athlete today at velocity sports performance jason's deli they love fresh fruit and premium uh, more natural ingredients experience exciting flavors true freshness and real taste so you know that you're getting nutrient filled goodness for your money download the jason's deli iphone or ipad app and skip the lines at the store today actually at work today jeff um the people in my office got Jason's Deli, nice. so and I was like, I, I saw. I'm really glad you guys did that because now I can tell everybody tonight that you got the um, the plain Jane um, tuna sandwich. Oh, or whatever plain Jane, plain Jane's yeah. a good, very <laughs> underrated choice at Jason's Deli. Frost Bank, another sponsor of Coppell Cowboy Football. They deliver banking services con or consistently, Texas style, located at the corner of Denton Tap and Sandy Lake in Coppell. J. Macklin's Grill, chef inspired, rent reservations not required. On the web at jmacklinsgrill.com. In fact, I remember J. Macklin's Grill. If you go to their website, you will immediately be hungry because you'll see the pictures of their food there. I like that. Chef inspired, reservations not required. <laughs> Anamia's Tex-Mex. Find out why this Coppell Mexican restaurant and caterer is considered tops in the Dallas dining scene at Anamia's.com. And Floss Dental, a new sponsor to Coppell Cowboy Football, a new experience in dentistry. Find out more at FlossDental.com. This is the Tom Landry Classic, as Jeff said earlier. It is an annual kickoff event for high school football in the area. In many years, it's being, been played at Ford Stadium on the SMU campus, but there happens to be a game there tonight. So it is moved out here to Allen Eagle Stadium on uh, near the campus of Allen High School. Again, the Longview Band out onto the field. The Tom Landry Classic is going on, has been going on since year 2000. Uh, it started off that year um, with, I believe, uh, way, way back then, the, the I know the Allen Eagles have played a few years in the Tom Landry Classic. Yeah, it was Allen against North Mesquite, and it was Allen with a 28-14 to 14 win. Louisville against Mesquite, Louisville won 14-10, and Petite against Ennis. That started the Tom Landry Classic at Memorial Stadium in Mesquite. In fact, some of the funny things, uh, last year, uh, the Coppell... Cowboys actually set a record for the longest pass play from scrimmage in the Tom Landry Classic. Two players that uh, were very big parts of the Coppell Cowboys last year, Cam Colby Mahan and Cameron Smith, the wide receiver, connected on a 90-yard pass play at Ford Field to uh, stun Longview. The end of the score of that one was 41-8. to eight. And uh, the Longview was actually higher ranked last year right. coming into it, Jeff. And Coppell took a 34 to nothing lead by the time we were in the third quarter. Uh, Coppell just hitting on all cylinders last year. 410 yards of total offense. This year, Coppell just has 96 total yards after one half of play, and it's Longview on pace for more than 400. They have 214 total yards. Uh, Longview's putting up quite the fight, and they're, they're the lower-ranked team coming into this one. Coppell is nationally ranked 
But Longview is giving them absolutely everything that they have. It's an impressive showing so far in the first half by the Lobos. Current state rankings have Coppell uh, as high as number five in mm -hmm. some polls, six in another poll, and Longview uh, at 17. So uh, right around that range in the polls. So very much a... Uh, uh, quite a battle. I mean, it's that's what the Tom Landry Classic is about: is pitting two teams together that are very highly ranked. Last year, like you said, uh, Longview favored but lost. This year, Coppell favored right. and losing. So, let's go over some of those uh, first half stats here. As Doug Steele, our uh, statistician, always is here, and he was definitely on the ball the entire first half while we were having problems, and so that's how we're able to to recap everything for you. We certainly didn't do it all on pen and paper. <laughs> Doug does it all on pen and paper and yeah. <laughs> transfers it to the computer. Yeah, that, that's what he's doing. Uh, Longview, 12 first downs to Coppell, only four. You mentioned one first down for Coppell in the first quarter, mm -hmm. and then only three in the second quarter. Uh, Longview has them doubled in total yards, 214 to 96. Only two completions, two pass completions for Coppell. Um, and Longview's completed nine. So that's really the big disparity there, Jeff. 123 passing yards to only 24 for Coppell. Yeah, it, it seems like Coppell's having trouble establishing passing game, obviously. You can tell that just based off the numbers that you just read. And I think it, it's been important for Coppell to emphasize balance going into this season. I, I don't think there is many questions about the running game going in with C.J. West, and we saw his 31-yard run for a touchdown, and that looked impressive. Um, it, you know, Coppell's just, just feeling Longview out. There were a couple opportunities where a couple short passes and could start to establish a balance and a mix. But, hey, if that running game gets going, Kara, that's going to open up that play-action pass, and that could lead to some deep balls and some big gains for Coppell. Last year, that was the key, is the key is the play-action pass. However, they had the big-time quarterback, Colby Mahan, who was uh, the senior, and Ed Cameron Smith, who was virtually uncoverable uh, for the mo whole, most of the season, combined with the running attack. This year, you knew they were going to have to lean on Gavin McDaniel and C.J. West to really come through, uh, and that big offensive line to come through and push down the field. But Longview mighty good defense themselves have been able to key on those guys and stop them to some extent except for the C.J. West 31-yard touchdown run. Let's see, what else do we have here? We have 20, sorry, uh, 91 yards rushing for Longview, 72 for Coppell. Um, let's see, penalties dead even at two apiece for 20 yards. Third down conversions, this might be a telling stat here. Only uh, one out of five for Coppell. Last year they were much uh, better. They were over 50% on their third down conversions. And Longview's having a much better time at third down conversions. Yeah, Longview five of nine on third down conversions. The Coppell defense has done a good job of putting Longview into a couple of, of tough situations. And Longview's done a great job of, of fighting right out of it. And, and they have Desmond Chumley to thank the Lobos quarterback at East. He's quite the playmaker. He can mix it up. Jermichael Hastie has had a great game so far. 15 carries per 100 yards. And remember, we're just through one half. Chumley, a junior, six foot, 190 pounds, takes Givens Caraway's uh, spot from last year. The senior graduates and uh, paves the way for Chumley to have a nice career. He's going to have a junior and a senior year. Uh, most likely. His backup is Cameron Castleberry, a sophomore, so Chumley should have the reins this year and next year. Uh, Longview, like you said, they're just full of athletes. And you know what else? They're full of tradition. And uh, Jeff, they last year went 9-4, and four, went deeper into the playoffs mm -hmm. at, than Coppell did, even after that big opening uh, loss to Coppell. They really righted the ship and went all the way uh, deep into the playoffs, and it became the... Uh, as I drag my paper out here, they, they, it was the third round of the playoffs, and they had, nine, they had nine straight seasons with nine or more wins. If you think about that for a minute, most teams only play ten games, okay? So if you can have nine seasons in a row with nine wins or more... That tells you what kind of a tradition and playoff tradition that Longview has. It's, it, it is what other teams aspire for, is what Longview has. Yeah, 9-4 last season and 
four and two in the in the district. I mean, it, both teams are coming off of big playoff losses. Longview lost to Westlake, thirty-eight to ten in the playoffs. While Capel lost to Desoto, forty-two to fourteen. So it's always interesting to see how teams try to rebound from oh, what is obviously such a heartbreaking loss. You know, we only find one winner in the playoffs, but to lose that way like these two teams did, it's interesting to see the mental approach to the new season. Okay, we're going to play a little excerpt here before the second half kickoff of our uh, Jeff got to talk to Coach Joe McBride before the game. Okay, Coach, we're finally here at the start of high school football season. How fired up is your team right now? Well, I hope they better be fired up. I mean, this is the first game of the year, and they get fired up for this. You know, and a great atmosphere, and playing a great football team. And you're going to have a tough time. But I think our kids are excited to play, and we just, you know, there's a lot of answers. You don't know what it's going to be like. The first round out of the sack, so we're just ready to get out there and see if we can back in the video tomorrow and see how many people are Talk about this type of opportunity to be playing, to be featured in the Tom Landry Classic. What does that mean to this program? Well, I mean, it's just a chance to play a great football team that ultimately makes you a better football team. Uh, it gives you a little bit of a playoff atmosphere that you're playing in later. And, uh, and I'll get maybe. Uh, but, you know, it also is a big deal just because as a coach, Tom Landry is the icon of it all. You know, he's the guy that, that people look to, uh, you know, kind of the Billy Graham of the coaching world. The guy that did it right. And so it's a privilege to play this under his name. Coach, do you think you can carry over the momentum from a great regular season last year into this season? Well, that's what we're shooting for. That's what we got to have. I mean, uh, we, we want to we get better. We want to do better than we did last year. That's what the name of the game. I don't want to be satisfied because we, we, we didn't win it all last year, and I think the name of the game is to try to win it all. What do you have to watch out for with this long beat team? Well, go ahead. Just athletes, man. I mean, they just, they're just they probably one of the most athletic teams in, in the state of Texas, if not the nation. Uh, we've got to tackle well. we got to execute. You know, uh, but we've, we've got to really play fast and, and, and tackle well. For new followers of the Coppell program, who are some guys to, to watch out for? Kind of keep your eye out for. What, what names will we be talking about a lot? Well, I think our line. I think, I don't know about tonight. I think they'll be good tonight, but eventually they're going to come along. And I think be a good unit. And, uh, you know, I think we have some good young receivers that are going to step in and show some people some stuff. Josh Fink, Obi Obi Ali, and, uh, you know, some young guys. Chris Bigger switched over from offense last year as a sophomore where he's on district to defensive line this year. And then a move in from Lindale, Texas, uh, Bill Anderson. He's a player, and uh, uh, hopefully he'll play up to his potential. It's hot tonight, Coach. How much of a factor will conditioning play? Well, it'll be the same factor it plays on the sideline. You know, you can't cry about that. Okay? they got to be in the same situation. you got to be mentally tough and execute. You, know, you can't control the weather. Finally, what do you tell your guys right before they take the field tonight? Yeah, I love them. Play hard. Have fun. Thanks, Coach. All right. Thank you. Coach, it's nice. How about that timing? Good job, Jeff. Boom. Oh, no. Nailed it. <laughs> it's time for the Play second half kickoff. Longview 10, Coppell 9. Longview did win the opening toss, and they elected to receive to start the game. And they went on that long drive uh, before the missed field goal. So now they kick off to Coppell. Fielding it in his end zone is Troy Parker. He comes out across the hash marks, now up the middle. Now cut back outside, he's at the 25, the 30, and he's going to be knocked down there at the 32-yard line. That's where... Coppell will start first down and 10, down by one point here as we start the third quarter. Troy Parker sure found a seam there, didn't he? It looked like he was able to bounce to the outside pretty easily. Almost had just one more cutback to go, and then he was bye-bye. But overall, good return and decent field position for Coppell. Parker and McDaniel are the returners on the kickoffs, and they chose to kick it to Parker. Parker also returns the punts for the team. Gavin McDaniel is the key running back for the Coppell Cowboys, and he will stand to the right side of the quarterback, Skyler Bono. Bono from the shotgun, waits for the snap. He takes it, and he has a zone read. He hands it to McDaniel, and McDaniel is nailed immediately and driven backwards. 
by the Longview defense. It's going to be a loss of six on the play. Second down and 16 coming up for Coppell. Kerry, got to give the credit where credit is due, and that time it was due to Omar French, who just jumped right in there. He read the play perfectly, and Coppell is stuck in a tricky situation already at second and 16. 11 minutes, 20 seconds to go in the third quarter. Opening drive for Coppell in the second half. They received the kickoff. Two receivers to the right side, right side, and Skyler Bono is back. He hands it off up the middle to, looks like Maloom, or, yeah, I believe it's, no, C.J. West, wearing the number one this season. He wore 32 last season, uh, and he manages to plug forward for four yards. It's going to bring up third down and 12. And again, this is just Coppell looking for balance, establish that running game that helped the passing game that struggled a little bit in the first quarter, maybe open up some play action possibilities. Two receivers, one to either side. Now a third one, which is Blake Mahan, goes over into the slot. Bono shouts out instructions. Now there's some confusion as they switch receiving sides. And there is a flag, uh, and it looks like a delay of game on the Coppell Cowboys. Coppell already won for five on third downs. This is not going to help them, Jeff, as now they're going to have a third and 17. Yeah, I mean, it, you know, if you put yourself in these situations, it's very hard to dig out of, and Coppell has seemed to dig a hole in this first drive after a decent kick return from Troy Parker and a little bit of trouble now with the third and long. Again, Coppell last year goes 11-1. and one. Their final loss was actually here at Allen Eagle Stadium in the playoffs. Back to the scene of the crime. Two, two receivers on the left side. Bono in the shotgun. He is back to pass here on third and 17. He looks. He pulls it down. He's going to rush or run out to the right side, and he's going to have to throw it away. Pretty good defense there by Longview. Carey able to rush that, rush the quarterback, rush Bono. They knew what was coming, and uh, Coppell struggled on that drive with the three and out. A lot of game left to be played, though. Coppell only down by one with one of the best punters and kickers in the state in Adam Sanders. He just boomed a couple in the first half. He was a very key element to last year's team with six field goals, which is a lot for a high school kicker. There's a punt that goes off to seemingly off the side of his foot, takes a great cop out bounce, and bounces finally out of bounds far downfield. Looked like a short punt at first, didn't it? Yeah, it did. And then it kind of spun out. It hit about the 50-yard line and just kept spinning and spinning the right way for Coppell as Longview will start at 34. First down and 10 for Longview. 10 to 9 is our score. Longview again, the number 17 ranked team in the state. They come out with a single running back next to Chumley. Chumley with the option, he pitches his out, and it's going to be flagged down barely. There's a flag way behind the play, deep in the defensive backfield, and it's going to be a huge loss on the play for Longview, actually a loss of four to push him back. It was like the back judge was throwing a javelin. He launched that penalty flag through the air. Jermichael, Jermichael Hasty was the runner on the play. Really wasn't given much of a chance after that pitch from Chumley, though, Jeff. And we got a personal foul, too, on Longview, so that'll send him back 15 yards. And it'll put, it'll put the Lobos in a tricky situation. Just as Coppell moved back at the start of their drive, at the start of this half, Longview now moving the opposite way. And we talked about at halftime, the very short halftime we talked, was uh, about how these teams are going to come out fired up and look at how they're going to execute in the second half. Well, maybe not I haven't so seen it yet. <laughs> I haven't seen it yet. I haven't seen it yet, but like we said, a lot of time left. 9.35 to go in the third. Long view from East Texas. A traditional power out there. Doesn't mind coming in town. They play a very, very tough schedule every season. They do not hesitate to play everybody, including Louisiana schools. Here's a little bubble screen out to the left side. That one is caught by Dorian Leonard, the 6'4", 200-pound senior, and he's not going to get very far at all. Coppell and their defense gave up 214 yards in the first half, yet it was only 10 points put on the board, and now they're tightening up a little bit here. It's going to be a second and about... 21 for Longview. And carry good coverage there by Jacob Murray, the junior defensive back. He read the play perfectly, and Longview's in a little bit of trouble. 
Three receivers go out to the right side. Desmond Chumley is the quarterback. Fakes a handoff. He has to be flushed out of the pocket. He throws a deep downfield. He's got a man. It's Jermichael. He's got it at the inside the 40-yard line. Sneaking out of the backfield all the way downfield is Jermichael Hasty, the junior running back. And it is a huge first down. Probably about 40 yards on that play down inside the 40-yard line of Coppell. We talked so much about Jermichael Hasty's effectiveness in the first half. And that was from running the ball where he gained 100 yards. This time, just like you said, snuck out of the backfield. Coppell was a little unaware that he got behind him and he was able to make a 40-yard play. Deep back is Ladarius Peterson. He's going to get the handoff, and now he busts it outside. A shirt tackle is the only thing keeping him from breaking it free. And a nice play there on defense by Collins Okacha, the senior linebacker. Otherwise, Ladarius might have gone. Collins Okacha, and again, it was Jacob Murray in, in the mix as well. Murray's kind of all over the place as defensive back today for the Cowboys. Murray, new to the mix, uh, didn't play last year very much at all. So good to see him out there as the starting corner, making things happen as a junior. And there's a handoff to the fullback right up the gut. And looks like knocked on his backside was the tackle of the Longview Lobos, Broderick Washington. But running behind him, getting a couple yards on the play. And it'll be a third down and five. So again, after they were facing a second and 21, they quite made something of this. They're at the 32-yard line of Coppell driving up by a point here in the third quarter. Seven minutes, 20 seconds to go. Here comes Chumley. He comes around the outside. He's going to be tackled from behind. He was flushed out by the initial rush, and then he was taken down from behind on the sack, and it'll be fourth down. That was Solomon Thomas with the sack. <coughs> uh, I'll tell you what, okay, expectations are so, so high for the defensive end, and he's He's on the minds of a lot of college coaches throughout this season as well. Thomas heavily recruited. He is an unbelievable player. He spent a lot of time in the backfield of every team that they played against last season. I walked by him last season down on the field, and I got scared. <laughs> Here's the punt formation for Longview. Again, in the Coppell territory. And there's a punt. He delays it, and he's going to hit a line drive right into the end zone. He almost delayed that a little too much and almost had it blocked. And Longview is having a hard time getting the right formation out there, and it seemed like a player jumped out from the sideline right as the ball was being snapped, something that the officials did not catch, although a flag just came in. There it is. Some, yeah, we're going to have to check that out and see what it's going to be about. But the teams have traded punches here in the third quarter as we're about halfway through the third quarter. And nobody has had any uh, action in the red zone just yet. Well, how big of a stop was that for Capel considering Longview had, had that second and 21, able to move the ball on a huge pass play to Jermichael Hasty, but then Capel really deed up at the right time. Yeah, they go to the I formation, Coppell and first down and 10 from their own 20-yard line after that punt went in the end zone. Bono under center. He's going to turn around, counter move, hand it to McDaniel. He's going to be hit. There's a fumble on the play. It's picked up by Longview. At the five, diving into the end zone, touchdown by Longview. After they pick up the the errant ball that came flying out, Stephon Maxey scores, and Coppell is stunned. On the fumble by Gavin McDaniel. It looked like, to me, Kerry, there was a problem in the handoff. It's like the handoff just wasn't clean between Barlow and Gavin McDaniel, and he never really had the ball. And then it just popped right out. And credit Longview for jumping on it, and it's Maxi who brought it into the end zone. And I credit Longview for being in the backfield when they're trying to give the handoff to Gavin McDaniel. Right. And that is a couple times that has happened, um, and a couple of losses for McDaniel, and now the fumble. Here's Perez who comes in and puts it up, and it is through the uprights. And now an eight-point lead for the Longview Lobos over the fifth-ranked in the state, Coppell Cowboys. It's something you see from teams early on in the high school football season and something that will absolutely be worked out as the year moves on. But it, it's the simple things. It's those little things. It's just the fundamentals. It's just making a clean handoff. And that's something that, unfortunately, Coppell was not able to do. Coppell Cowboy Football brought to you by Dickie's Barbecue Pit. 
Make sure you go and check them out. They're at Denton Tap, just north of Beltline. Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Capel Cowboys having some trouble here opening the season. A very defense-based team, and in fact, Jeff, according to the preseason rankings for what they're worth, out of 245 5A teams in the state of Texas, Capel's deep defense was ranked first in their preseason rankings, mainly based on the returning uh, seniors that they had, or returning juniors, now seniors, that they have coming back on the defense, like Solomon Thomas. Like Solomon Thomas. It helps a lot when you have the number five defensive end in the country on your team <laughs> to, to anchor the defense. That'll get you pretty high in most defensive rankings, I would say. It, it will help. Here's the kick. He puts his foot into it from the 40-yard line. Driven deep, and Parker's going to take it. Four yards deep in the end zone. Thinks about it. Takes a knee, and they'll bring it out to the 25-yard line. First down and 10 for Coppell. There, Parker looked for the sign from the captain, Gavin McDaniel. McDaniel told him to hold out, but he was ready. After that last kick return, Parker was sure ready to take it out again and try to make another run at it. Only four first downs so far for the Coppell Cowboys. Can they add to it? They scored nine points in the second quarter. Two on the safety. And one on a run by C.J. West. Fake, or no, actually he did hand it off and bust it outside to C.J. West. He could go. He's at the 45 to 50. 40, 35, 30. Down the sideline. He's going to be knocked out of bounds, but not until he's inside the 20-yard line of Longview. They fooled me. They fooled Longview. And all the way at the sideline, there is the burst they needed. That was C.J. West seeing the perfect hole. Skylar Bono did an excellent job at selling the fake as he, he handed it off to West for just a, a massive gain and a huge play. 58 yards there, and now the handoff to the, the quick hitter, and that one does not go anywhere. And it's Parker Wilson getting the carry there. I'm not sure he has touched the ball yet. Uh, he is a starting fullback, new to the varsity team off the JV, a junior, 5'11", 195 pounds, didn't fool Longview, loss of one. Second down and 11, two receivers to the right side of the formation, running backs flank Skyler Bono in the shotgun. He's going to fake, actually he did hand it off to, I believe that might be Parker Wilson again. Yep. Wraps it up, fights through, pounds off a couple tacklers, and he's going to get five yards on that carry. Brings up a more manageable third down and six. Interesting how in that big run from C.J. West, how the Longview defense bit on the fake from Skylar Bono so much because the run game is has been what has been efficient for Coppell. So you would think that the focus would be on C.J. West versus Skylar Bono in that situation. Two receivers out to the right side of the formation. Bono looks over there, calls out the signals. He turns, he pump fakes, now he's flushed out of the pocket. Rolling right, people all over the place. He manages to get away. Good footwork, but he's going to be pounded eventually, and he's going to lose five yards. But he did a really good job of evading what he could. It was going to be a loss of about 12, and he manages to scramble back. And what his evasion did was it gave Josh Fink a little bit of time to sneak past the secondary if Bono could have scrambled for a couple more seconds, he would have found him wide open in the end zone. Instead, Bono actually preserves a possible field goal. At least it's it's going to be a 34-yard attempt instead of over 40 for Adam Centers in his yellow and orange shoes. There's the snap, the hold, the kick is deep. It's up. It is good. And Coppell manages to to capitalize on the big C.J. West run. They put him down into the red zone, and it's 17-12 to 12 in favor of Longview. Cut it to five. That kick could have been good from 52 yards. <laughs> 34, we went boom that one once again. It's a big response from Coppell. We talk about, Kerry, the, the changes in momentum that this game can provide. And when we saw a lot of lead changes in the second quarter, Longview jumped out to a hot start in this quarter. Huge response by Coppell there. They had to score, and they did. Coppell Cowboy Football brought to you by Frost Bank. They deliver banking services consistently, Texas-style. 
located at the corner of Denton Tap and Sandy Lake in Coppell. Coppell moving from left to right in front of us here. The 40-yard line is where they will tee it up. Coppell in their red jerseys with dark pants and their black helmets. Longview in all white with their dark green helmets. Longview Lobo cover colors are green and gold, a very deep green. You can see that green on the opposite sideline where their crowd is. Here comes the kick from Adam Centers. The right footer puts it deep into the end zone. It's going to be seven yards deep. Flagged down there and kneeled on there by the return man for Longview. They'll bring it out to the 25-yard line, first and 10. I'd be very surprised this season, Kerry, if any kickoffs from Adam Centers were not touchbacks, right? Last season, he would kicking them through the uprights on occasion, <laughs> especially if the wind was kicking up at Coppell Cowboy Stadium, which does happen out there. Here, I don't know, this is an enclosed uh, kind of facility that, that the wind might not come through. Um, you know, the scoreboard's about as big as the end zone. So, I mean, there's a lot of, and it's kind of sunken down. So it's quite a facility here at Allen Eagle Stadium. Under center, Chumley, play action, screen in the middle. He drops the ball. It's back at the six-yard line. He manages to land on it, but it's a huge loss on the play. I mean, a monster loss. How many, that is 21 yards or 19 yards he lost on that play. Coppell defense just warned him. They read that play perfectly. It was a, a play action screen pass. At least that's what it looked like to us up here in the booth. And it did not go well for Lindsay, but you got to credit the Cowboys defense for jumping on there. Second down and 29. Don't really have a play for second and 29. <laughs> they go to the I formation under center. Chumley hands it off straight up the middle. It's going to be a pickup of about probably eight yards he got back there. And that's your play on second and 29. It's just to try to, to grind it out and create, <coughs> create a more realistic third down for you. But third and 21, <laughs> not prime real estate. From their own 14-yard line, they have to really guard against field position at this point. Coppell is very much of a field position team as they, they work the defense to try to capitalize on short fields. They did that in the first half. They just couldn't seem to get in the end zone. Three receivers to the left side of the formation for Chumley, and now a flag goes up, and it's a delay of game, so if third and 21 wasn't hard enough. <laughs> and remember, Longview has had trouble punting the ball out of the end zone. We saw a bad snap early on in the first half, and that gave the first two points of the game to Coppell. So Longview doesn't want to be too close to the end zone when they have to punt, but they're pretty close now, just nine yards out of it. If you had to say offense, who, what team has had the best of it, it is Longview. But if you had to say special teams, it is absolutely the Coppell Cowboys. And now they're in a pickle here. Might have to punt, like you said, from their own end. Not only to Troy Parker, but execute the snap. Chumley back to pass. He's going to throw deep on the left side of the formation. And it's downfield and knocked away at the last second. Great coverage down the left side. He actually had an open receiver just under through him a little bit. On the receiving end was Chris Pelham. And it was the coverage by Jacob Murray. How many times have we talked about him throughout this quarter? Murray making an impact. He, he trailed him almost perfectly the whole way. The ball might have been slightly underthrown by Chumley, but overall it's great coverage by Murray. I think Murray was ready to close at any moment when he had the chance. And he barely trailing. And did a good job of not interfering. Troy Parker stands at his own 49-yard line, almost right in the middle of the big eagle head in the middle of the field. There's a snap. It's very high. Running back for it is the punter. He barely shanks one into the middle of the field. It's actually a miracle play by the punter to get it off, and he gets it out to the 36-yard line. That's where Cobell will start at the Longview 36. And I don't know how Chris Covey, the punter for Longview, was able to handle that one because there's a high snap, and by the time he brought it down, it seemed like the Cowboys were absolutely swarming him. So most punters in that situation panic, just try to run out of the end zone. He at least thought to, to get the ball out of there, and that's what he did. All things considered, not a terrible punt, but 
Good field position for Capel. Chris Kobe, a six-foot senior. He's also a starting cornerback, so the athleticism pays off right there. From the 36-yard line of Longview, this is big. Here's a handoff to Maloum. Maloum cutting back and forth and is going to be spilled out to the left side and a loss of two or three on the play. You know what? Capel just not doing very well on first down in the second half here. And you can't blame Maloum there because the Longview defense read the play. It's by, the, by the time he got the ball, he was swarmed and he was down. Second and 12. Don't want to squander this field position for the Coppell Cowboys. They're down 17 to 12 with a minute and a half to go in the third quarter. Two receivers go to the right side of the formation, a tight end on the left. Two running backs, including Gavin McDaniel, flank the quarterback. Bonnell, planned rollout. He's going to keep it, tuck it, run, gets inside the 35 yard line down to the 32. It'll be third down and six. Good job by Bono there not to panic and throw the ball away, not to panic and force the ball into coverage, but to get a couple of yards to make it a reasonable third down opportunity for the Cowboys. Bono only two out of six through the air. And here's the third down conversions that we've been talking about so much. Capel only one of eight. They go with the staggered eye formation as they're on the near side of the field. Play action, rolling, Bono hit from behind and dropped. Four yard loss, five yard loss, back at the 38 yard line. So three plays and they've lost one yard on the drive. And Bono never saw him coming. It was to Cord Flanagan who plays that rover spot for a long view. He jumped right in and that's a blind side hit for you right there. And they're fortunate that Bono did not drop the ball. Easy to drop the ball when you get hit like that. Right, right. And you're not it comes out of nowhere. Right. So here comes the big fourth down, and you're kind of in that tweener territory mm -hmm. here, Jeff, where you don't know whether to punt or whether to um, go ahead and well, make a quick kick or something like that. Coppell, very much a fan of the quick kick last year, and we'll see if they try that here. Or it'd be a 54-yard field goal. <laughs> Yeah, Adam Centers can can hit the we've seen we've seen him launch some. It is at the middle of the field, at least what it seems like. You think Centers gets a chance? I just don't know here because you give up field position mm -hmm. if you do that. I can uh, no and long view has had a lot of trouble with bad field position right by the end zone. Maybe you force another punt and something goes wrong. You you capitalize based I, off of that. I agree. I think you count on your defense. That was the end of the third quarter, by the way. That's why there were no. Uh, we're not yelling about plays that are occurring right now. <laughs> yeah. So let's tell you about a couple uh, of our sponsors. Jay Macklin's Grill, Chef Inspired Reservation was not required. A little bit upscale food there. I mean, they kind of put the twist on on the regular Americana food at uh, Jay Macklin's Grill. So check them out on the web at Jay Macklin's Grill. Dot com. I hope they're open past 10.30. <laughs> they are the kind of place that would be open. <laughs> okay, they are. And they have an outdoor uh, they have an outdoor seating area. Now, when it's 184 degrees, like <laughs> today, I'm not sure that's a great idea. Yeah. But by now, it's probably down to 94. So, you know. We switch ends of the field. Capel will drive toward the... Might be that was into the field. Talking about. And there's Bono. Now what will happen if he is going to quick kick? He'll back up about four steps right after he calls some signals. He does not. They're going for it. Here's the pass downfield. It's off the hands of Longview linebacker who bounced back into, into coverage and makes a nice play holding his ground in the zone. It's Jalen Jackson. Uh, Jackson... If he intercepted that, that pass, he could have been gone. Now, it works out. He dropped the ball at about the 22. Longview's actually going to get better field position than that. But after after he caught the ball, if he would have caught the ball, he had a wide open field ahead of him, and he was probably thinking about that when the ball was coming into his hands. So the chance to pin Longview deep does not work. They do not try that option. And now from the 37-yard line, here's the handoff to Jamichael Hasty. Hasty pounds over left tackle, gets three yards. It'll be second down and seven, but at least it's positive yards for him on this play. And there's been a lot of negative yards for right. both teams in this half already. And with Solomon Thomas in on the tackle there, big surprise. And Thomas 
great defender not only against the pass, he not only gets sacks, but he finds his way to work his way into some running plays. Clock running, 11 minutes and 25 seconds to go in the third quarter, or in the fourth quarter. Empty backfield. And throwing into the, to the slot, actually, Jermichael Hasty breaks free and then spins out of another tackle, and he's down to the 41-yard line of Cobb Bell. And, boy, Hasty will come out of that backfield for you, get in the slot and run downfield like a wide receiver, won't he? And it's tough for the defense to track with a versatile running back like that. It, it's almost like Gavin McDaniel for Cobb Bell, how McDaniel is available as a weapon outside of the traditional running game. AC has been available multiple times for Desmond Chumley. Three catches for 66 yards for Hasty. There you go. And he also has 17 rushes for 111. Whew. First down and 10. There's a handoff. This one's to Ladarius. And he is going to be spilled. Had, kind of had to bust it outside, and then he got turned around, and it's going to be a loss on first down. It's another good read by the Coppell defense there, and then long you had no chance right from the very beginning of that play. It creates a second and long, and we're at the time of the game where every possession is absolutely crucial. Every play is as well. So we approach the 10-minute mark in the fourth quarter. Weather not a factor tonight except for, like Coach McBride said, hey, both sides have to play in the heat. So no real wind or precipitation at all. There's a fake handoff and a slot pass into major traffic. Big hit laid on the intended receiver, Dorian Leonard, but threw it into like four couple right. of hours. Great coverage, but somehow it, that ball managed to find the hands of Dorian Leonard. And, and Leonard was not able to come up with the play. It might have been tipped before it got there because there were so many Cowboys around him, but overall it looked like Despite the great coverage, Coppell caught a break. Here's a big third down and 13. They're 5 out of 11, out of 11 on third down conversions in the game so far. And they're from the 44-yard line of Coppell. This one's going to be a tough one to turn. Third and 13. Dorian Leonard comes across. A timeout has been called by Longview as it doesn't look like they had the right formation and they might have been down on the play clock. Well, this is the field position game coming up right here. If Longview is unable to convert this third down, and they've been pretty solid on third down conversions throughout the night, 5 of 12, they were better earlier in the first half. It's, it's going to be all about field position. Even if Longview can't convert this third down, they have the opportunity to pin the Cowboys in pretty deep territory and get the Cowboys a long field to work with. Coppell Cowboy Football brought to you by Floss Dental. A new experience in dentistry. Find out more at flossdental.com. 17 to 12 is our score. Kerry Lowry and Jeff Platt bringing you the action tonight with Doug Steele on stats. Dorian Leonard, wide receiver for Longview, has been targeted seven times, six catches for 89 yards. And just that one drop there. So Leonard's man managed to get free a, a lot throughout the night. He is their key guy, and they don't hesitate to use him. And that has been one of the big differences in the game, the passing game of Longview and the inability to pass for Coppell. Back to pass, throwing deep down the left side. He's open, and it's Leonard. He's got it at the five. He's in the end zone. Touchdown, Longview. Double coverage, and he ran by both of them. Well, it's like speaking of the devil. You know, we mentioned his name and, and how efficient he's been throughout the game, and Leonard was just managed to break free off of double coverage. A lot of credit to Desmond Chumley there for, for a heck of a pass. Just put it right in his hands. is, is a perfect play. There's, there's all nothing the Cowboys could have done about that one. Andres Perez in. There's the snap, the kick is up, and it is good. And Longview has taken a 24 to 12 lead with 10 minutes exactly to go in this ball game, the season opener, the Tom Landry Classic. 
Still a lot of time left, Kara. I don't think Coppell needs to get the ball and start throwing down the field every single time. They can still work in C.J. West in the running game, especially considering that that's been what's gotten you any points. Just 130 total yards for Coppell and just 24 through the air. Which, of course, leaves 106 for the ground on 23 carries, so quite a good average there as C.J. West with 105 yards. They've really bottled up Gavin McDaniel. He only has two yards. He's averaging uh, a third of a yard per carry, which, you know, Gavin McDaniel is the key, I want to say. He's the, he's the number one runner. Uh, last year, almost 1,000 yards, while C.J. West had about 500 a lot of that came when Gavin was injured for a couple of games. And uh, they're, with that two-headed running attack, you just figure them to be unstoppable. And we're going to have to see it here in the last 10 minutes, Jeff. And it'd be interesting if McDaniel starts to become more available for Skylar Bono in, in the passing attack as well, because we've seen that from him throughout the game. He just can't get open. They put the ball in the far left hash mark and that's where they're going to kick it there Andres Perez not with the strong leg definitely kicks returnable uh, a, a returnable ball and deep standing at their own six yard line because they know are the two return men and this one is going to go to an up back he calls a fair catch which is probably not the greatest uh, choice however you know what Credit to Longview for kicking the short kick yeah. to make that happen. And that was a tough situation for Tyler Hopkins there, who caught that at about the 20-yard line. Because the ball was coming at him so fast, it was hard for him to know how close Gavin McDaniel was to him. So he went ahead and made the safe play. The safe play was the fair catch. The risky play would have been to get out of the way and let McDaniel catch it and go for a return. Or to take it himself. Right. Yeah. <laughs> So he puts it in the hands of his running game here. Bono from the shotgun. Two receivers to the right side. Also a tight end on the right side. Bono calls the signals. He goes back to pass. Happy feet in the pocket. But he breaks out and he's going to get a first down as he turns the corner. And he's knocked out of bounds at the 34-yard line. Give him 13 on that run there. And Skyler Bono adds to the running game for Coppell. Give Bono a lot of credit there. Quick feed. He's almost sacked two or, or three times. Saw nothing available out there. Took off towards the left side of the field. Was able to nab a pretty good game. First down and 10 from their own 34-yard line. One receiver to either side. The ball is on the left hash mark. Bono looks over the defense. He's back to pass. Short drop. He pulls it down. He's going to run again. No, he, this time he passes it passes at the last second out into the right side. He was almost at the line of scrimmage. But he gets it away. It's incomplete, however. It was right before that line, and I guess that's that's going to end up benefiting Coppell as obviously an incomplete pass will stop the clock, and it stops it at 9.45, and you need that clock to be your friend when you're down by 12 in the fourth quarter. Big Blake Mahan comes in from the sideline, bringing in the play as the tight end. And he goes out into the slot on the right side. He's very tough to match up with at 6'6". Six, six. Bono looks over at Mahan. It's a reverse screen. They throw it out to Gavin McDaniel. He picks up a block. He's got the 40. He's the 50. 45. 41 man to beat at the 30. And he's pulled out of bounds at the 28-yard line of Longview and a play and a flag at the very, very end could tack on more. 38 yards. What a play there. We, Kara, we talked a lot about Gavin McDaniel and if he was going to become a weapon in the running game or the passing game. He certainly became available there right off that screen pass. Oh, just one man to beat. Almost got an answer. They're processing the penalty and sure enough it is against Longview. It'll tack on at least five yards and now they keep going. He's at the 15. He's down to the okay. The referee finally puts down the ball at the just inside the 14 yard line so it was half the distance. Yeah it looks like they called a face mask a personal foul on Maxie the free safety but Maxie was the one who saved uh, Longview in that spot and without him McDaniel was gone. Bono in the shotgun. He's got Gavin McDaniel to his left and C.J. West to his right. Two tight end formation. Fake. Handoff. Gavin McDaniel. 
up through the middle, inside the 10. Nice play on first down, down to the 8-yard line. McDaniel making an impact, just a perfect drive, very well executed so far for the Coppell Cowboys. They haven't even spent a minute with the ball. So this is exactly what they needed right here. Clock running, nine minutes to go in the ball game. I formation, quick handoff to the up back. He's going to be hit immediately, but bounces out. But C.J. West is going to bounce out and bounce down. Depending on where they give him forward progress, they're going to be nice to him and give him only a loss of one on the play. It'll be third down and five from the nine. Capel tried to go with a quick play right out of the huddle, line up real quickly, snap the ball real quickly, and hand it off to C.J. West, but there's just nothing doing there. Again, a good read by the Lobos defense. Seems like you have to get outside on these guys. Um, the inside on those quick hitters aren't exactly working. Again, the two running backs flank the quarterback in the shotgun. Blake Mahon is a wing back on the left side of the formation. There's a snap. He looks over into the corner. He's throwing to Mahon deep in the end zone, and it's almost, it would, could have been interference if it wasn't uncatchable, but it was about four yards out of bounds. Mahan, even with a 6'6 frame, could not go and get that one. Great coverage there by Trayvon Howard of Longview. He blanketed him the entire way, and this brings up a very tricky situation. It's fourth and five, and you got to go for it here when you're on the nine-yard line and down by two touchdowns. Well, you here. have to do the math here. You're down yeah. by 12. Field goal still going to keep you down by two possessions. That's right. So, therefore, keep Adam Centers on the sideline. That's how important that last touchdown was. Now a timeout is called by Coppell, and that's a valuable timeout. One of their three they had. But if you're going to use one, fourth and five here is probably the time. Yeah, I'd, I'd say so. This sure looks like the biggest play of the game so far. Coppell down by 12, and time, time is ticking just a little bit over eight minutes. they got to get in the end zone here. This is just a crucial play, and you work on these go-to plays throughout the preseason, throughout training camp, throughout all these practices. Let's see what Coppell has lined up here. This is Coppell Cowboy Football on Champion Sports Radio. Brought to you by Jason's Deli. They love fresh food and fresh food and premium, more natural ingredients. Ex experience exciting flavors, true freshness, and real taste so you know that you're getting nutrient-filled goodness for your money. Download the Jason's Deli iPhone or iPad app and skip the lines today. Free delivery on orders over $25. Fourth down and five from the nine. They can get the first down without the touchdown. Bono looks to the sideline. No excuse to not have a play in at this point since they were just there. Now here comes another player out. Uh-oh, this is confusion that they're not going to really like. Still got time, 15 on the play clock. Sprinting in was Connor Williams, the second tight end. There is a handoff. It's a pass play into the end zone and caught for a touchdown. C.J. West throws it into the end zone on the halfback option. And the Coppell Cowboys strike and get within a touchdown. Oh, we talk about go-to plays. That sure was a go-to play. <coughs> that fooled Longview for sure. Caught by Blake Mahan. The starting tight end. And he was alone, Jeff, in the end zone. When that throw was, well, I would have been there too if, if <laughs> CJ West had the ball. I figure he's running. Adam Centers puts the extra point up. It is good. And Coppell has made it to where the last 8-13 is going to be a lot more exciting. They're only down by five. Uh, I mean, what a, just an absolutely crucial play there by the Cowboys. If you don't score there, and you're down by 12, but you're giving Longview the ball. Longview's running game has been hard to stop throughout the nine, and Longview almost could have could have run out the clock or at least drained it to three or four minutes. Then you're getting the ball back down by two possessions. Puts you in a really big hole. Just a huge touchdown there by the Cowboys. What a play call, too, huh? Yeah, that was quite a play call, and I, I think I remember last year there was some early in the season they, they had somebody else throw to a tight end early in the season, and I... I, I don't remember what it was. So he has that in his arsenal, but that's tough on 40. And you got to credit the Cowboys. They didn't panic right away. There was obviously some confusion. And Connor Williams ran in late on the play, but they sailed down. They realized they had time left on the play clock, and they executed that play just perfectly. Body language of the Longview Lobos kick return team is not that <laughs> positive. I think they... 
think they were ready to go ahead and start celebrating the bus trip home, but now they're down by, or up by five, and again, they're going to be forced to put together a nice, long, time-consuming drive and another, uh, something more than a field goal to get this game back to a two-possession game. Kick return might also be upset just because he knows that the ball will probably go out of the end zone and he won't get a chance to return. <laughs> That's true. What's the thing? Oh, offside kick! And it is dropped! It is going to be picked up by Troy Parker! Parker is going to get it! The surprise onside kick and Capella recovers! Well, that ball certainly didn't go out of the end zone. Parker bounces out of the bottom of the pile. They had him on the very wide side. He ran down and then backtracked to get it. This Cowboys team is fired up. You mentioned Longview maybe looking a little bit down, especially now the morale of this game has just completely changed for both teams, it seems. Now they huddle on the sideline. The offense is out there. They know they have a chance to it, against the demoralized Longview Lobos and drive down. They're at the 48-yard line of Longview, down by five. Would still say advantage Longview at this point. They're 48 yards away. Mahan goes into motion. Skyler Bono under center. Pitches back to Gavin McDaniel. Gets some positive yardage into the linebacker core. Inside the 45-yard line. Down to the 43. You know, Kerry, just two minutes ago, the Cowboys were down by 10. with a Or down by 12, excuse me, with a long way to go. My oh my, how things have changed. Cowboys down by five with the ball in Longview territory. 43-yard line, second down and five. I formation behind Bono is under center. Blake Mahan over on the left side as the wing back. Here's the pitch back. They're running strong. Gavin McDaniel gets the corner inside the 30 down to the 29. They just put together the power running attack, and they're not putting any misdirection on that. Just run to that side. Boy, McDaniel has stepped up this half. He'll be the first one to tell you he struggled mightily in the first half, and the Cowboys just couldn't get anything going. But thanks to him as a weapon, not only in the running game, but in the passing game as well, the Cowboys have been able to move the ball down the field. Momentum totally shifted. Ball at the 29-yard line, first down and 10. Josh Fink sprints out to the right side of the formation. He's the only receiver in the pattern. There's a handoff straight up the middle to C.J. West. He lowers his head and pounds the strong safety. Boy, they just met, went up in the air together and dropped together. A seven-yard run there on first down. Less than Maxie just had a monster collision and looks like Maxie's down on the field right now for Longview. That was power against power right there. And if CJ's a little bit shaken up, well, he definitely shook up Maxie, like you mm -hmm. said. And Maxie's going to have to take a play off. What a collision that was. Unbelievable. Oh, they speed ahead from both sides. So two fantastic players meeting in the middle, right between the hash marks. And a key play when they both knew they needed any yard they could get. That's what you get right there. Power football. Second down and six officially <coughs> from the 23-yard line of Longview. Longview leading by five. Capo with the ball. From the shotgun, Skyler Bono. He's going to hand it to C.J. West. He's between the hash marks, weaving. He's going to have a first down and more inside the 15-yard line down to the 14. Tackle by Antonio Carter, the junior free safety. Capella has done a great job establishing the run game in the second half of play with not only C.J. West but Gavin McDaniel as well. It seems like the offense is really starting to click here in the fourth. Antonio Carter with the tackle. He is the one that replaced Stefan Maxey. First down and 10 from the 14-yard line. Bono, five on the, shot, on the shot clock, on the play clock. And there's the handoff to Gavin McDaniel, and he is right up the hash mark. Give him three yards there on first down. Down to the 11. 
Under six minutes left, this drive is starting to look like the last drive did, where the Cowboys were able to make it to the red zone and took them four downs, but then they were able to get in the end zone. Suddenly, Coppell up to 234 total yards to Longview's 310, so they're definitely putting it together. That screen pass didn't hurt. Quick set, pitch back, power formation, over to the left side, and Gavin McDaniel hurdles a uh, would-be tackler manages to dive down to the eight. Third down and four from the eight. Been here before. Is this where we see the play action that's been set up so well by the running game with McDaniel and with West? It could be here and you roll. I think you roll. End off. Two receivers go out to that wide side of the field. Boris Maloon to the left of Bono and Gavin McDaniel to the right. There's a handoff to Malone. He bounces off a tackle. He's down to the five yard line. Oh, he's so close. Malone has a lot of power to him and he got down to the five. They needed the four though for the first down. And he's definitely short. He's a yard short and with four and a half minutes to play. Now this is the biggest play of the game. It's fourth and one. Okay, Jeff, what do you do? Do you kick the field goal? No, I think you have to go for I think you go for the touchdown here. And you're right there. It hadn't seen too many negative plays, at least in this quarter. Just jam it up the middle, right? You got them on their heels. Under center, I formation. Gavin McDaniels, the deep back. Skyler Bono, under center. They're jumping the line. It looks like all sides. It was a hard count. It might have drawn them off. That would give them a first down. It would be half the distance. It is all sides against Longview. The coaching staff next to us jumping up and down. They wanted that one, and they got it. Well, that's one way to do it. You don't have to worry about a play. You just draw the defense off sides where about six Lobos jumps. See, they thought they had learned the snap count. They clearly had not. Clock starts. Four minutes to go in the game. Coppell down by five. Gavin McDaniel is the deep back. Mahan over on the strong side. Now he shifts over to the weak side, and they pitch it that way. McDaniel puts his nose down into the end zone. Touchdown, Coppell. They lead it 25-24, to 24, pending the extra point. And you got to think they'll go for two here to try to extend the lead to three points over Longview. Gavin McDaniel, wow, as he turned things around in this second half of play. Rough day for Gavin McDaniel, but he's come through here not only with a big uh, receiving uh, on the on the screen pass where mm -hmm. he went 40 yards, but he's getting the rushing numbers back up there too. And the Coppola Cowboys break the huddle with 12 guys, and therefore an illegal participation flag that'll cost them five on the extra on the conversion. That is deadly. Coaching staff saw it. They tried to call a timeout right before it. Curious to see if the flag will be picked up. They did get the time off. The timeout off, it looks like. That is a that's a huge call big, if they did, and they sure enough did. Big yeah. break for the Cowboys in it. Very alert of their coaching staff, realized something was wrong, got that timeout in just in the nick of time, considering one official had already thrown a flag, it seemed like. <laughs> yeah, they did. They had already thrown the flag from the backfield when they saw the 12th guy come bouncing out of there and run into the sideline. <clears throat> Top L Cowboy Football on Champion Sports Radio brought to you by Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance can help your young athletes reach their goals. Visit their Coppell location at 801 Hammond Street near Bethel Road and Freeport Parkway, or visit them online at VelocitySP.com. Become a better athlete today at Velocity Sports Performance. The ball spotted at the three-yard line for the conversion. Going out to the right side of the formation, is Dion Foster. Very wide out there. This usually is spreading the field so they can run into the slot. Bono, under
under center. He's back to pass. Look into the middle. He's going to be sacked. Sacked on the play by Omar French, who was all over him, and he just could not get it away, Jeff. Omar French with a couple of big plays for Longview here in this second half. It's, it was that play action that we thought the Cowboys were setting up so well with the efficiency of their running game, and that play action was read perfectly by French. He did not fight for a second. He was able to come up with the big sack. Now we have a one-point game. A classic, if I must say. Again, last year... You had mentioned it, 34-0 to zero at one point. It was not a one-point game. No, Cobell no. stormed out to a lead, held on 41-8. to eight. And that was kind of ironic uh, as a start to the Coppell season because they went into the playoffs only allowing eight points a game, and it started with the eight points they allowed in the opener. That's how good their defense was. They went into the playoffs with the number one defense for um, in yards allowed. Sure, nice to have Adam Centers here on a crucial kickoff and just let a boom one in the end zone and make Longview start at the 20. Although you never know, I guess. Well, last time we thought that too, and they ended up getting the onside kick and a touchdown. So I have a feeling, though, you're right. This one, the play is kick it as far as you can, Adam. From the 40-yard line, he puts his foot into it. It's high, and it is not that deep. It's going to be flagged down three yards deep, but enough for Jermichael Hasty to go ahead and stay there and not bring it out. And he's a dangerous return man, but Adam Sanders takes him away. It's like he was so surprised to maybe have a chance at that that he wasn't ready for the ball right, right by the goal line, wasn't able to get off a return. Three minutes, 49 seconds to go for Longview to come back, and they're going to have to go 75 yards to do it with two timeouts. Coppell defense pleading for the Coppell crowd to make some noise. Sprinting out of the huddle, Dorian Leonard out to the far left side of the formation, back to pass is Chumley, looks deep for Leonard, double covered, Leonard goes up for it, he's got it! He gets it off of a tip where both defenders manage to get their hands on it, and he still comes up with it. There's a flag down back at Longview's 18-yard line. Here's the replay on the monitor of Dorian Leonard. Boy, he is a hoss. That guy, <laughs> that guy is something. But it is all coming back, like you said, with the the penalty, so they bring you back to the 25-yard line, and then they'll mark 10 yards beyond that. It was such a quick play, Jeff. It didn't look like they had time to hold what, what it. A, what a crucial penalty. And the ball was in the air. It seems like Nick Ruby got his hands on it for Capel. Went right through his hands. It popped up. Leonard was able to come down with it. That, that was unbelievable, but all for naught. There, it's first and 20 now. <clears throat> First down and 20. We've had all kinds of technical problems. Here's a pass out to the left side, and it is going to be over the head of Dorian Leonard and out of bounds. Well, I think it's safe to say, Kerry, that Cobb Bell needs to watch out for Dorian Leonard. <laughs> I'd say you go to, they've been double covering him, and it just makes it tough to double cover him, and uh, and he still makes plays. Jermichael Hasty actually going out of the game right now off to the sideline on a big second down and 20. Three receivers off to the left. There's the snap back. Chumley throws it into the slot. It bounces up in the air and is picked off by Coppell. It was off of Leonard, it bounces up off of his knee, and he gets intercepted. Longview actually picked up a blitz from Coppell pretty well there to give Chumley a lot of time to throw the ball. He put it in his receiver's hands, but then it just popped up right into the hands of Bo Anderson. I believe Bo Anderson was mentioned by Coach McBride mm -hmm. as a player to watch. And he makes a huge play yeah, right Anderson here. Anderson watching the ball there.
from the 27-yard line. Coppell will take over, and they're going to have a different mindset now, Jeff. They want to run this clock out. Three minutes, 30 seconds to go. Yeah, best-case scenario is running that clock down and getting into the end zone. Need be. And here's the pitch back. And he's going to be corralled from behind, threw him down backwards as Gavin McDaniel took one for the team there. And it's just about everybody knew he was going to get it. And now the timeout is called by Longview, I believe. Go ahead and preserve as much time as possible. And that pitch out has been pretty successful for Coppell here in the second half, especially to Gavin McDaniel. They've really been able to make the running game more efficient through that pitch play, but Trayvon Howard wasn't having any of it that time. Coppell Cowboy Football on Champion Sports Radio brought to you by Anamia's Tex-Mex. Find out why this Coppell Mexican restaurant and caterer is, is considered tops in the Dallas dining scene at Anamia's.com. I could go for a flout tonight. Yeah, I hope they're open late, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Some fried ice cream? <laughs> fried <laughs> ice cream. Doug Steele wants some fried ice cream on his way home. He's got a long drive. It's a little tough to eat it on the, while you're driving, though. But it's okay. It's a nice problem to have, Doug. <laughs> Second down and 13 coming up after the loss on the play by Gavin McDaniel and the subsequent timeout called by Longview. C.J. West is now the deep back, and boy, is he deep back there in the I formation. There's the handoff to him. Very telegraph play, and they go ahead and drag him down from behind. He might get back to the line of scrimmage. No, a loss of a yard. Third down and 13. Make that third down and 14 now coming up. And again, that was Trayvon Howard, the strong safety, reading that play perfectly, picking up on it. Only one timeout left for Longview. Looks like they will hold on to that one. And the clock will run. Champion Sports Radio will carry Coppell Cowboy football all season, as well as Cedar Hill football, and the Plano schools, and Marcus High School in Flower Mound. Third down and 13. Counter move. Handoff. C.J. West in jail. Be driven backwards, loss of four on the play, but he does fall inbounds. That'll keep the clock and going. Carry that that drive might have knocked the Cowboys out of field goal range, which is where they started the drive, and the field goal would have been massive, forcing Longview to score a touchdown. Now it's just a one point game. You probably pooch on it here, trying to make Longview start deep in their own territory, but they only have to score a field goal. That's an excellent point there. When you had a chance to to kind of go up the middle, they went outside on very telegraphed, slow developing pitch plays and sweeps. And that, that did cost them. But the pitch plays have been working for Coppell throughout the second half. I thought they saw an opening in the defense. They went with the counter on third down and it did not work either. Very much of a um, heavy pursuit run defense for the Longview Lobos. Longview again, number 17 in the state of Texas coming into this game. They've been held to 24 points. The reason I say held to <laughs> is that last year they went, they had, uh, let's see, how many games did they score over 45 points? Something like tw oh, six, six of their 12 games they scored over 45 points. And here comes the pooch bond as Skylar Bono steps back about three yards, takes a high snap. He's going to kick it left-footed. And it goes down to the 10, and it's going to be flagged down at the 1. A beautifully executed play. They did it last year with, with Colby Mahan the whole season, and this time they do it with Skylar Bono. What a play there. The left-footed kick. Drifts right down to the one. And when you line up in that formation, it's tough for Longview to put somebody so far back and act as a punt return. Nobody was there. Not that it would have really helped him out too much. A perfect play there by the Cowboys. Very well executed. Leaves Longview with 2 minutes 25 seconds left and a lot of field to go. About as much field as you can have. <laughs> right, right. It's as tough as it gets right there. 99 yards away. 
225 is doable, though, Jeff. I mean, mm -hmm. you can do that. Here's a snap. High one. Throws it out into the flat to Jermichael Hasty. He pops it up in the air. Very similar to how Dorian Leonard did earlier. This time it finds the turf instead of an awaiting Coppell defender. Long view quarterback Desmond Chumley probably has to be fairly frustrated at this time. He's had a lot of balls go through receivers' hands. It seems like that was a play designed simply to give Longview a little more room. Get him out of that end zone. From the one-yard line, second down and ten. Dorian Leonard, single coverage out there with Troy Parker. Quite a matchup out there on the left side. Chumley looking deep over the middle, and that one is thrown into triple coverage there, and it does fall harmlessly incomplete. Intended for Jordan Whitaker, the senior tight end. Tried to find Whitaker, but that, that play was very well covered by the Cowboys. That would have been very difficult for Chumley to fit in that pass, and Cowboys have forced a third down just like that. Two minutes, 15 seconds to go in the ball game, and the clock is stopped. However, Longview cannot stop the clock with a timeout anymore. Down by one. 13 unanswered points by Coppell here in the fourth quarter. To come back and take a one-point lead. Here comes the blitz on the outside. Throws it deep to Jermichael Hasty. He jumps up, and it is incomplete. Boy, he skied for it and then landed on his back. Almost had it. Yeah, it seems like it. that pass somehow hit Hasty in the hands, and he flew into the air to grab that ball, almost came down with it. Incredible effort by Jermichael Hasty. Here's the biggest play of the game now. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> Fourth down and ten from your one. At the Longview Lobos. I expect this one to be to Dorian Leonard. I, I give him my best chance if I throw it to him. He's got solo coverage. And there's the throw out to him. And it's short. It bounces short hops to him. He was past the marker. Turned around on his curl route and couldn't get there. Shorter on the pass to Leonard. It, it's that simple. Leonard made a ran a great route. Made a great move on the ball. Just came up short. And in the Tom Landry Classic, it looks like the Capo Cowboys are going to come through with a one-point victory here in Allen, Texas. Does present a, an interesting scenario, Kerry, because with a little over two minutes left, you can't quite kneel out the clock yet. You're on the one-yard line. Well, I'll tell you what they're not going to do. They're not going to lose 20 yards and get out of field goal range. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> they, if anything, Adam Centers needs to come in and kick a field goal in fourth down. Gavin McDaniel is the deep back. Skylar Bono under center. They go to the tight formation. No receivers, just a load of wing backs and tight ends. Hard count. They do kneel it down. Yeah, they might kneel it for the first Two or three plays on the 25 second play clock. I guess it depends how fast they reset that, huh? This will be a test on the uh, on how much time can you burn. I just didn't think you could burn too long. Well, there will be about two minutes. a minute ten by the time you they set the ball for third down. I'd mean about 30 seconds by the time they set it for fourth. Skyler Bono is going to be very upset. He's ruining his rushing stats right My now. My math skills might be terrible on this spot, Kerry, so I apologize in advance. <laughs> no, you're making the attempt, though, to figure out <laughs> how much time. So there's another kneel down, or actually fell down backwards, just to get on the ground as fast as possible. Third down and five. And the Longview coaches want that play clock going and going now. It is, like you said, a 25-second play clock from the time they spot it. Now it's down to 15. They'll probably burn as much as they can, even though they're at the line with 10 to go on the play clock. Bono looks up. Should be a long count. Seven, six, five, four. And he goes ahead and tries to plunge forward because they're trying to go ahead and well, set it up for the field goal, I guess. There's a little bit of time on the clock. Might as well try to get in the end zone or at the very least just burn some more time. There should be about, what, an eight-second differential between game clock and play clock? 
Maybe seven. Fourth down, here comes the kicking unit. Or is it? I think they were asking to the sideline whether to bring in the kicking unit, and I don't think anybody is. Coppell has one timeout left. You might expect them to use that once this play clock gets down to zero. Gavin McDaniel is the deep back. Five, four on the play clock. The pitch out. He's going to get to the corner, into the end zone. Coppell with the dagger touchdown here at the end on fourth down and three. There was that pitch out. Yeah. And that's worked well for most of the second half. It didn't work well in the Cowboys' last drive. It certainly worked well there. What a game for Gavin McDaniel. What a second half for Gavin McDaniel. It's his second touchdown of the game. Only 36 yards on 15 carries. It's tough sledding for the lead running back of the Coppell Cowboys. And there's a flag at the end of the play with some some bitterness or trash talking, whatever you want to call it. And it's six seconds to go. Coppell up 32 to 24. Well, and they, they, what? They didn't kick the extra point, did they? They did. Or they did. Okay, so they're up by they're up by eight. Up by eight. Which leaves a little bit of chance. Yeah. You expect to see a lot of laterals soon, Carrie. <laughs> As we said, Coppell Cowboy Football and Champion Sports Radio all season long. Next week, they face McKinney Boyd and the Boyd Broncos as the Cowboys travel to McKinney for that game. Again, that last year, Coppell won 31-6. The Cup won most games, 36. <laughs> it could be a little deceiving. We saw the opener last year, a 41 8 route by Coppell. This one's certainly been a lot closer. It took four games before Coppell gave up 24 points and, uh, last season. So, yeah, a little different. Credit to the Longview Lobos coming out firing today. And you know, McKinney uh, Boyd is, is pretty darn good this season. They're ranked in the top 20 of the Dallas Morning News. And that penalty, just like you expected, Kerry, was for unsportsmanlike conduct. So that means Coppell is going to kick off from the 45 across midfield, which, which just looks weird. It does look odd. So this is one where kids are sprinting up into the stands behind the goalpost because they think they're going to get a chance at this one. It's either that or he's just going to plunk it maybe down to the five so it lands. I don't know. Lock won't start until long he touches it or he'll boom it. He did boom it deep. It doesn't go all the way into the end zone to the chagrin of the youth down there. Well, here we go. He probably work on this play a little bit in practice throughout the first month of practice. A lot of hook and ladders. That's right. They get to start from the 25-yard line. It'll be chaos ensuing soon. Good luck calling this one, Kerry. So this could get, <laughs> could get a little hectic for you. Six seconds. Dorian Leonard out to the left. Chris Pelham to the to the right side of the formation. Back to pass. Three man rush. Flushed out of the pocket. Throwing deep. Over the middle. It's going to be off the hands. A little uneventful there. He went about 40 yards downfield, and it was in and out of the hands of the Coppell defender. Bounces away from him, and that does end the game. That was Bo Anderson looking for his second pick of the game, and he's actually probably a little mad at himself for that one. Well, you knock it down, you can't lose. That's right, because then if you take it and you fumble it, then right. more For bad now. things can happen. The teams meet at the center of the field in the Tom Landry Classic and the, for the second time in a row. In successive years, Coppell and Longview meet in the opener, and Coppell comes out victor victorious for the second year in a row. Kerry Lowry and Jeff Platt with Doug Steele here at Allen Eagle Stadium bringing you Coppell Cowboy Football on Champion Sports Radio and a nice season opener for the Coppell Cowboys. 32-24, our final score. 
We'll let you know who brings you Coppell Cowboy football, and then we'll bring you the stats to close out tonight's game. The Coppell Cowboys are on Champion Sports Radio. This broadcast of the Coppell Independent School District is sponsored by Dickie's Barbecue Pit. Check out the best mouth water and lip smack and finger licking great tasting barbecue there is at Dickie's Barbecue Pit, located on Denton Tap Road, just north of Beltline. Dickie's Barbecue Pit, slow smoked and served fast since 1941. Also brought to you by Velocity Sports Performance. Velocity Sports Performance can help your young athletes reach their goals. Visit their Coppell location at 801 Hammond Street near Bethel Road and Freeport Parkway or visit them online at VelocitySP.com. Become a better athlete today at Velocity Sports Performance. Jason's Deli. They love fresh food and premium, more natural ingredients. Experience exciting flavors, true freshness, and real taste so you know that you're getting the nutrient-filled goodness for your money. Download the Jason's Deli iPhone or iPad app and skip the lines today. Coppell Cowboy Football brought to you by Frost Bank. They deliver banking services consistently, Texas style, located at the corner of Denton Tap Road and Sandy Lake in Coppell. Also brought to you by Jay Macklin's Grill. Chef inspired, but reservations not required. On the web at jmacklinsgrill.com. Anna Mia's Tex-Mex. Find out why this Coppell Mexican restaurant and caterer is considered tops in the Dallas dining scene at animias.com. And finally, Coppell Cowboy Football, brought to you by a new sponsor, Floss Dental. A new experience in dentistry. Find out more at flossdental.com. Final score, 32-24. to 24. In favor of the Coppell Cowboys, they start their second straight season at 1-0, and or at, well, just like last year, at 1-0 and after the Tom Landry Classic. This time out here at Allen Eagle Stadium, a beautiful facility on a hot night. But all the teams persevered, and it was a fantastic game, Jeff. Uh, it absolutely was, and Carrie, I keep going back to it, but with 10 minutes left in the game, it was 24-12 to Longview. And we're staring at a 32 to 24 final score. Coppell running off 20 in a row is quite the quite the impressive performance. And you have to point to the key point when it was 24 to 12, when Coppell was facing a fourth down and five from the Longview nine yard line. C.J. West, a little halfback pass to Blake Mahone for the score. That was massive, and then the Cowboys defense stepped up as well. Desmond Chumley, quarterback for Longview, has been doing a great job. He's been very efficient getting the balls to his guys at really Dorian Leonard. Dorian Leonard, just a magnificent performance. The wide receiver from Longview has a heck of a future ahead of him. But credit the Cowboys defense for holding strong throughout those last 10 minutes of the game. 32-24, our final. We'll go through the <clears throat> drives of the second half. It was a tough, it was a <clears throat> a major comeback, like you said, that key play, fourth down and five. And CJ West comes through and we'll get to that one. Here is in the second half. <clears throat> the Cabo Cowboys had lost the toss and therefore they received the second half kickoff. They got the ball and it was kind of clumsy right off the bat. They went backwards a little bit. They ended up with a punt. Eight yards or negative eight yards on three plays. It really doesn't, you know, you don't you don't like that kind of stat there. Uh, Longview got the ball um, and they ended up going 29 yards in five plays, but uh, ended up punting it away into the end zone for a touchback. And out to the 20 line, 20 yard line came the ball for Coppell. Again, sluggish by both teams. And then Gavin McDaniel uh, fumbles the ball and. Um, it was returned 18 yards for a touchdown, and that put uh, that was a just a huge play, and that put them on the board and gave the uh, Longview the lead by the score of I believe what 18 to 17. or 17 to nine at that point. So they had the eight point lead, and that would end up being an important little factor that they were up by eight at that point. Cabell had to respond. And they did to some extent. 
They the ball they got the ball at the 25 yard line after a touchback, and then they handed it on first down to C.J. West, and he ran 58 yards up the left sideline, and uh, they followed that with a couple runs that did not get anywhere, and Skylar Bono actually lost some yards, but they were at the 17 yard line, and Adam Centers made it pay with a 34 yard field goal attempt, and that brought them to but then uh, 17 to 12. They were only down by five at that point. Centers kicked the ball through the end zone for a touchback as expected, and then Chumley got uh, kind of dropped the ball as he went back to pass. He was rushed. He went to go raise the ball up to uh, to kind of cock it to throw it, and he ended up throwing it behind him. He lost 19, and it never got a whole lot better after that. And then they went to a right, ran to Jermichael Hasty for eight yards, and <clears throat> and then uh, they had to punt on fourth down and twenty six from their own nine yard line. They went three plays, negative sixteen yards. But then Coppell could not uh, capitalize on it. They go um, four plays and only got a minus one yard. They were still down seventeen to twelve, and it looked like the Longview defense really had their their number at that point. Uh, the next drive, Longview got it, and they went, uh, put it together. Five plays, 63 yards, and um, uh, it ended with a Dorian Leonard catch for 44 yards and a touchdown into double coverage. And to your to what you said, Jeff, amazing uh, Dorian Leonard today. Uh, Dorian Leonard it just could be an absolute star, and I think he he maybe established himself tonight. Remember. Okay, this is this is the main stage of high school football in Texas, the Tom Landry Classic. And Dorian Leonard did a great job of maybe establishing himself as one of the premier wide receivers in the state of Texas. A, a, a big game for him, and, and like I said before, a big future ahead for him as well. So after that, they were uh, up 24-12, to 12 and it looked like dire straits for the Coppell Cowboys. They really hadn't gotten anything going. They had four first downs in the first half. And just nothing going right. And after that play, when double coverage, when a guy scores, it's like, well, we can't play defense either. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, what, what are we going to do? The only thing we're doing very, very well is special teams. Well, um, the Coppell Cowboys got the ball, and they actually put a drive together. They started with a decent return. Or actually, this is the return where the fair caught it at the 21-yard line, which we thought was a bad idea. Well, they end up going 79 yeah, yards in seven plays. It works out. Um, finally capped off <coughs> with an interesting series of downs in the red zone. They resulted in a fourth down and five, Jeff, and that's when the big play occurred. Yeah, the absolute key play of the game, and it was a play, that, <coughs> or a play call, I should say, that Longview clearly didn't expect, that we clearly didn't expect as well. A little halfback pass from C.J. West that resulted in a touchdown for for Blake Mahone. And we said it at the beginning of the drive, carry that there was no reason for Coppell to panic. Sure, they were down by two possessions. There's still 10 minutes left in the game. They didn't have to start bombing the ball down the field. Sky Rabana didn't have to start going going deep. They, they, they kept the running game alive. Gavin McDaniel and C.J. West were able to succeed off of it. So that the extra point by Adam Centers was up and good, and the Coppell Cowboys are suddenly within five, but still Longview's going to get the ball. Uh, not really. <laughs> Here comes the onside kick. And it was a beauty. It bounced off of a Longview defender, and then he was hit by a Coppell upman, and sweeping in behind the play was Troy Parker, who seems to always be around on special teams. And again, the special teams war today completely won by the Coppell Cowboys, and that's another example. They recover the onside kick, and they set up 49 yards away from the end zone, and they run the ball seven straight times after that. Gavin McDaniel twice for 20 yards total. C.J. West for 15 yards total on the next two plays. Gavin McDaniel for six more yards. This is where you had said, well, here come the sweeps. They're running the pitch plays. It was really a perfectly executed fourth quarter overall from a coaching perspective, and we saw why Joe McBride was voted 5A Coach of the Year by Texas Football. You had the halfback pass. 
then the surprise onside kick that worked perfectly, the, the establishing of the running game, sticking with the running game, maybe more importantly, when it was clearly struggling in the first half. The balance on offense was finally achieved by the end of the game. Just perfect fourth quarter in many different ways for Capel. After the touchdown, Capel led 25-24. to 24. They went for two, which was the right decision. You want to get up by a field goal if you can. And instead, a big sack on the play by the Longview defensive uh, lineman Omar French, the junior defensive end, who came around and got Skyler Bono. Just, he just could not get the pass away on the conversion attempt, and that ended up uh, leaving the score at 25-24. And there was time left. So Longview gets the ball, and they cannot go anywhere. They're just... Um, they um, they kick off into the end zone for a touchback, and then Hasty gets zero yards. They had a holding penalty. This is the one where they had the giant play downfield to Dorian Leonard for about you know 50 yards, but it got called back for a holding penalty, and <clears throat> so they just went backwards two plays, negative 10 yards, and then uh, Coppell took over, and they got a bunch of uh, negative yardage. However, they didn't have a chance to. Uh, they went for the quick kick instead of trying to put the game away with a field goal, and the quick kick goes all the way down to the one-yard line, and that was a huge play right there. Yeah, the, the pooch punt or quick kick, whatever you want to call it, by Scarabana was was perfect. Again, when they line up like that, it's tough for Longview to put a guy back by the end zone. It's something they couldn't afford to do with that formation lineup, and, and the punt was perfect, and it trickled down all the way from the 10 to the one. If Longview would have had a guy back there, he could have fair caught it at about the 10. Give them a little bit more room to operate. It's, stu- it's tough to be stuck right back there in your own end zone, as Longview experienced in the first half when they tried to punt from their own end zone, and the snap just went right out of the end zone. That was an important two points early mm-hmm. in the game, and uh, again, special teams for Coppell really can have effectively won the game today. And uh, the punt that goes down to the one-yard line, another special teams play. And that forced uh, Chumley to have to throw from his end zone on fairly quick passes, <clears throat> three in a row, uh, actually four in a row, uh, when he went for it on fourth down, of course. All of them were incomplete. The last one uh, looked like sing- single coverage over there with uh, Dorian Leonard, but it short hopped right into his hands, and that effectively ended it. Skylar Bono then um, kneeled on the ball three times, and then on the fourth down, they went ahead and ran it in for a touchdown, and that put it away, resulting in taking the one-point game to an eight-point game, and <clears throat> Adam Centers kicked the extra point, 32-24, the final. This is the Velocity Sports Performance post-game show for Coppell Cowboy Football on Champion Sports Radio. Now we're going to take a look at some of the um, the individual statistics, and then we will uh, send it on to next week when the Coppell Cowboys take their 1-0 record to a powerful McKinney-Boyd Bronco team. But here's some of the, the individual stats for the Coppell Cowboys today. Scott Arbano, 3 for 10, 63 yards. C.J. West, of course, <laughs> carrying with that one, a halfback pass, one of one for nine yards and a touchdown. The running game, Gavin McDaniel, 15 carries for 36 yards and two scores. C.J. West, 13 carries, 112 yards. It's an average of more than eight and a half yards per carry. He was impressive on the ground. Then in the passing game, Gavin McDaniel. We said his name a lot throughout that second half. One catch. For 39 yards. It was a big catch. It was a huge play. McDaniel just had a monster second half. And you, you look at his numbers, carry 15 carries, 36 yards. One catch for 39 yards. They don't jump out at you. We saw him have a lot better games throughout the course of last season, but he made a, a huge impact in the second half. Josh Fink, one catch for 12 yards. Blake Mahone, one catch for 9 yards in that touchdown off the C.J. West pass. Adam Centers, one for one, of course, on his field goals. He had a 34-yarder earlier in the game. Three for three on his extra points. And on his kickoffs, four touchbacks. And on his kickoffs, four touchbacks out of six kickoffs, and one was onside. 
Yeah, yeah. 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 on psychic. <laughs> so talk, talk about a good day for Adam Centers. You called it before the game. He's one of the best kickers in the state. You saw yeah, why there. He's, he's a weapon. And he didn't even really get to punt the ball a lot uh, today. He's also the punter. Um, but, you know, as, as Coach McBride tends to do, they will go yeah. to, the, to the pooch punt or quick kick uh, pretty often um, as opposed and to... Why not when you have Scarabano who can pin it down to the one-yard right. line? I think you want to use that as a weapon. It's a clever play. And center's 34-yard field goal, like we said, could have been good from 54 as well. So for the team stats, if we take a look at those... Um, Longview, for the most of the part, most of the, most of the game, they had pretty much outgained um, Coppell pretty heavily, and they did end up winning that battle. Uh, Three hundred and and one yards of total offense for Longview against two thirty four for Coppell. So uh, Coppell shortened that gap quite a bit, and in fact. I believe held uh, Longview to about 100 yards or less mm -hmm. in the second Longview half. Longview had 214 total yards at halftime. Remember last year, it was Capel gaining 410 total yards, that offense clicking on all cylinders. This year, it almost looked like Longview was going to be that team, but the, the Cowboys' defense really bore down. So what do you see, you know, if going into the rest of the games? I mean, take put yourself in, in the coach's shoes. Yes, you won the game 32-24. Yes, it's the Tom Landry Classic. You got to play in this big stadium. Your fans are happy. They're going to go home and high-five. But, you know, <laughs> I'm one of those people who, um, I remember Doug and I did the uh, the, Allen High, the Allen Championship game in 2008, and we spent pregame talking about how somehow the 14-1 and Allen Eagles were in trouble because, <laughs> and, and sure enough, they didn't score in the first half because, yeah. Things happen. You start playing tougher opponents, and, and Longview is tough. But where do you see that they need to improve the Capel Cowboys? Well, I think it's tough, Gary, because you look at this game and you see a couple quarters that Coach McBride and his staff are probably not going to be thrilled with. And then you see the fourth quarter, and more specifically the last 10 minutes of the game, where the Cowboys just have to be absolutely thrilled with their performance in every aspect of the game, offense, defense, special teams. Everything was kind of clicking. It's about balance within the offense and establishing that running game. C.J. West did a great job keeping that running game alive, and then Gavin McDaniel really stepped up in that second half of play. And you look for that balanced attack that can set up a decent passing game as well. We started to see a little bit of it, just a couple of play action plays here and there. I think we can see that open up more throughout the course of the season. Um, on the defensive side of the ball, I mean, Solomon Thomas, the defensive end. He was one of the best defensive ends in the country, really, really anchors this Coppell defense, and I think you saw the prime reasons why today. These, these are games that, that Coppell is going to win in the trenches. They have a huge offensive line that's, that's really led by Bill Weber, the 6'5", 305-pound senior. I mean, these, these are college-sized offensive linemen mm -hmm. for Coppell. And they need to win the battle in the trenches, and they should win the battle in the trenches. They did tonight against a smaller defensive line in Longview, and Coppell will see a lot of smaller defensive lines throughout the course of the season. And Weber, that good point there, he spent most of last year injured, mm -hmm. and as a key player, he was, uh, I want to say he was missed. I mean, obviously he's missed, but he's an addition to the offensive line, almost like they just acquired a player right. um, because he didn't get to play very much last season. Here, an interesting stat that I like to look at is the average starting field position, and this is where you can see the special teams come through mm -hmm. for Coppell. They average start at their own 45-yard line, and when you can do that and you shorten the field for your offense, which admittedly is a struggling offense right. that is dependent on running uh, game, you got to play that field position battle, and today they did it absolutely, and it was by special teams and running the ball effectively. Yeah, I tell you what, I mean, when you have Adam Sen Centers booming those kickoffs, that, that helps immensely. When you have Skylar Bono who can pull off and execute a perfect quick kick or pooch punt or whatever you call it, you want to call it, that's going to help immensely as well. And I think you might see in the future another aspect of um, of special teams, and that's Troy Parker in the return game. He broke a couple, didn't have too many opportunities, but he's an explosive player who's going to look for uh, explosive returns. He is very key. You saw him recover the onside kick. You saw him returning kicks. He's the key punt returner and kick returner. And, of course, uh, an all-district corner on the defense. So 
<clears throat> the but I, I'd say if I'm Coach McBride, I really have to take a look at my passing offense and and what was wrong with it. Was it my protection? Was it you know? But is it we're not pulling the trigger fast enough? Am I do I, do I not have a receiver <laughs> that's stepping up? And and you're gonna have to solve that because your defense and your special teams can't give you you know midfield every single time. One of these times you're gonna have to drive it out of your own ten yard yard line. And uh, without the running game, and hit some key passes and because you're going to need that passing attack. If you're forced in the second and longs, you're forced in the third and longs. That passing game probably needs to be a little bit more efficient. And then Skyler Bongo would probably be the first person to tell you that. And receiver Josh Fink would be the second. And then they know they need to get a little bit more involved within this offense. And Coach McBride probably knows that. He would like to balance things out a little bit more. Sure, the running game was great tonight, and that led Capel to win. But what really is going to make this team dangerous is if they're able to effectively balance both a passing and a running attack. You brought up Josh Fink. He is only a sophomore, mm-hmm. and uh, you know wasn't even on the varsity last year, is needless to say. So, and to get a starting nod at, at uh, sophomore 5'11", 170 yeah. pounds. Shows you there's high hopes. There's a lot him. of high hopes for him to be uh, the uh, not necessarily the heir apparent to Cameron Smith, who right. was unstoppable last season, but somebody has to fill that that role. Um, and the, the, they did have a catch tonight by um, Blake Mahan for a touchdown that, that was a nice one. So, so, yeah, they'll put some things together, and they'll have some time to think about it. And uh, then they'll get after it next week on a, on another road game, little way, little ways away from uh, having the first game back in Coppell. So, I uh, wanted to thank everyone who brought you tonight's game. The president of Champion Sports Radio is Thomas Lee. Our analyst for tonight's game is Jeff Platt. And on stats, as always, Doug Steele. For Jeff and Doug, I'm Carrie Lowry. Thanking you for listening to the Coppell Cowboys defeating the Longview Lobos. 32 to 24. The season continues next Friday night as the Cowboys face McKinney Boyd out at McKinney. Good night, everyone from Allen, Texas, and good night, Nash.